Welcome back to Beyond the Headline, everyone. It's a super exciting day today because I'm with my friends Liz and JJ, the co-founders of Way Up. Thank you guys for coming back and joining us. Thank you for having us, as always. So I want to start out with what we were just chatting about, actually. You guys have a new video featuring Eric, one of your students who got hired with Way Up, and it's one of my favorites yet because he shares that 80% of his resume is from jobs he found on Way Up, and he's paid off his first year of loans at NYU. That's huge. Catch us up on everything you're working on in that light. Man, so um, we since the last time we chatted, we've gotten a lot more data and information about which students are actually getting hired and what jobs are really filling successfully. Um, and luckily, most jobs are filling successfully, and one in every three students who uses our site gets hired. So we've just compared that to other like businesses in the industry, and I mean, there's no comparison. Um, we're light years ahead, and I think part of it is because of the quality matching, and part of it is because we have just really good jobs on our site. Um, so I would say it's been really cool to get emails from students, you know, many times a week saying, "Hey, changed my major because of a job I got on your site," or "I paid for tuition because of um, the jobs I've gotten." Like Eric, who paid for his entire first year of tuition at NYU, which is just completely insane to me. And and there are so many students who have said that to us. Um, for all the full time. I actually reached out to one student who looked like she was unemployed and open for a job on our platform and I reached out to her saying, hey, we're actually hiring um, and I think you'd be great for this role. And she responded, um, I'm really sorry, but I can't because you I already got a full time job <laughs> through you guys. Um, and that was like amazing. So uh, yeah, it's been really fun to see the success stories rolling in. I'm glad that you also awesome. mentioned that you guys look on way up to bring people on your team because that's how you settled on the name way up which I still every time I say it in my head I still say I feel blessed I don't know why I can't st I can't stop saying that why did you guys rebrand for those who don't know sure so we when we first started the company in September um, we had the name campus job actually that campus job we dropped the that soon thereafter we knew eventually we would have to change our name um, and what it came down to as time went on that so we talked to very, very big businesses. Let's say the summer was coming up. We talked to big businesses and they'd be so excited to use us. And they'd say, great, we're really excited. Let's wait till the fall because we want to hire interns and you obviously don't do internships because your name is Campus Job and you only do campus jobs. Um, and to those businesses, we had the opportunity to explain, no, we actually do internships and full-time jobs as well. But for every one of those, how many did we never get the chance to talk to? Um, and we, we knew the time had come that to expand, not only to get over that, but to just expand in general we had to rebrand. And it was an opportunity to rebrand to something inspiring. Yeah, students were also confused, um, equally so, and for the same reason. So we knew we wanted something that was maybe a little less literal, um, like the name Campus Jobs. So we actually uh, had our interns at the company, who we hired through our own website, um, come up with a new name. And then we posted a job on Waya, which was Campus Job at the time, saying we're looking for a logo designer. Um, and so we posted it for all graphic design students and someone applied named Molly and she came up with the design. We posted, or the logo, we posted a job for uh, film students to create a video and actually film students who had worked with us before applied and they created our video. So it was a lot of fun. It was a really cool rebrand and it was, it was fun to say that our users did the whole thing. And JJ, like you said, I know part of it was in thinking about the future and how big you guys want way up to be. And Liz, it reminded me of a conversation you and I were having when you were in LA about Mo Koifman's insight, think big, but operate very deliberately. As you guys look ahead to 2016, what are your big plans? A lot. So we're hiring a lot. So we have this office now. Like last time we spoke, we were at a co-working space because we were between Y Combinator and finding our own office. And now we have our own office, which is themed to college. So each room is like the frat room with the beer. There's like a beer uh, a beer pong table we're glued the, to the we're wall. We're in the sports room now, as you can maybe tell. Yeah, there's like uh, <laughs> lots of, you know, a jersey. There's the foam fingers. So anyway, um, so we need to fill up the office. Uh, so not not just because we want to fill the office, because we actually need <laughs> more people. So one big priority is just continuing to hire excellent people. Um, and I would say we're, we're planning out a lot on the tech side for getting more jobs on our site in a more scalable way. So whether that be through applicant tracking system integrations, which we're doing a lot of work on, uh, partnering with some other companies who have a lot of jobs that can help us fuel our jobs, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
I'm really excited. Um, we're still going to have our campus rep program. A lot of the student-facing stuff will look similar, but we're definitely scaling out our sales and uh, engineering teams for sure. And as you and focus on oh, the teams, like you were saying, when we first spoke, you guys are at about seven people fresh off of YC. Now you're going to be 30. What are the big roles that you've hired for? Ooh. That's a good one. Well, everyone's a big role. <laughs> um, I would say maybe some of the more senior, senior meaning experience. Exactly. Yeah, we hired, um, we have someone who's now leading our uh, product on the B2C side. Um, we hired a head of sales who's made a huge difference in terms of just bringing experience, right? HR, many, many years of HR sales experience. Um, we have a head of ops who ops. is managing, he, like I used to have to do all payroll and finances and by the way, most of the finances <laughs> were like not very well done and so now we have someone whose whole job is making sure that it's done right. Um, yeah, each one of those people, it's it's simultaneously A, taking off such a burden that was on us, but then even more than that, they come with so much experience yeah. that they get to show us, we get to learn from them how we should have been doing it the whole time. Yeah. We've learned so much in the past, oh gosh, in the past seven months. It's like embarrassing how little we knew seven months ago. Although it's also embarrassing how little we probably know now, but that's okay. We're having fun. And that's also what helps us stay naive enough to keep going. I love that you phrased it that way because it's really difficult to hire for a role that you don't know that much about. How did you guys hire for those senior roles? What's the process like? So I can let Liz talk some of the business roles more, but I can tell you I do this now every day for a lot of the engineering ones because many of them, for example, data science, um, ATS, integration engineer, are so specialized that we're looking for these people specifically because we have that skill gap. So it's doing. So to start again, it's first doing as much research as possible on the role itself um, and what other companies do. Some of that includes talking to other founders and other leaders of similar teams. Um, to see the type of people they've hired and they've had success with. And then something I really like to do is during the interviews, during the very, very first interviews, learn from them, from the people we're talking about for this role as much as I can about what they would envision the role to be. Some of that is even for data science, asking them, okay, well, what are the really difficult questions you would ask yourself in an interview? And then they tell me them, and then I ask them those questions. <laughs> yeah. And then I use them again and again. Um, and through that, you end up building a really robust interview process. Yeah. And I would say on the sales side, um, I think a lot, uh, sales and operations, so we got really lucky hiring a guy to lead our ops who had kind of done a very similar job before, a different product, different business, but he was head of ops and finance at another company. So a lot of it was learning about what he was responsible for at that company and then doing reference calls and making sure he was indeed responsible and, and was doing it right. Um, and then of course like culture, culture, right. you know, fit. And then head of sales, that was like, an incredibly long process. It was the first time we hired a recruiter to help us. Um, and his name is Bill Corbett, and he's amazing. General Catalyst, one of our investors, had suggested him to us. And he brought me, like, every phenomenal salesperson in New York City. Actually, I interviewed plenty of people in Silicon Valley as well. Um, and I'm talking from everywhere. We were interviewing VPs and directors at everything from LinkedIn to Indeed to this to this to this um, and at the end of the day there was one guy Jason who just stood out as being someone who was ready to get his hands dirty really understood the business it was perfect timing from a standpoint of we were at a point where you know we desperately needed him and he was open to thinking about joining us um, and and you know he was a perfect culture fit I mean the guy is like he just fits right in so I just want to highlight here too how much our investors and mentors and advisors help us, especially with these roles that we're hiring for skills gaps that we have. As much as we do all of this, one of the final steps, especially for a senior role, is to have an interview with some with someone who really does know, whether it's an investor who has a lot of experience in this in this role or hiring for this role or a mentor. Um, and, and they've been invaluable for me being the final stamp of approval on these really, really important experienced hires. What's the best advice that those investors and mentors have given you on growing the team? Hire people you can learn from. Hire people who are better than you, which we've definitely done. I mean, for definitely for every senior role and probably for most middle. I don't even know what to call it because everyone's kind of a senior because it's such a small company. Everyone has so much responsibility. <laughs> but for almost every role, I would say we've hired people who know way more than us. And when you think of where the team's at now, so there's the difference between seven, like we were saying, and 30. Your role as founders and leaders is so different because you actually have to lead and manage a team. What does yep. that feel like? Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to um, 
an incredible CEO this morning who um, runs a publicly traded company that's doing pretty well. And uh, he was in the office and I was asking him, like, what do you think of as successful CEOs of companies my size? You know, what, what are they doing well to help them grow quickly? And things he was telling me, are, I think, are things that we're both doing. So such as reminding everyone, like, that, you know, you're, you guys are doing the thing that will be successful versus all the other guys out there who are trying to do what you're doing. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, communicating the story to our team. Um, very, very, like lots of transparency. I mean, we're kind of obsessed with transparency. If investors are telling us bad things or good things, we're going to repeat it to our team, um, sometimes to our own fault. But, you know, I'd rather everyone know everything. Um, and then just like keeping everyone accountable. So when you're seven people, it's way easier to hold everyone accountable because you see what everyone's doing every day because you're all sitting at one table. Whereas right now, it's much more of like, I need to hold you to your numbers because I'm not seeing you every single day. Um, and if your numbers aren't hitting, like, or if you're not pushing as many PRs as possible or whatever it might be, we need to investigate like what the hell is going on. Um, so I would say those are some of yeah. the differences. I think there's also a lot in learning how to let go on the right balance of mm -hmm. doing things yourself and, and and I wouldn't even say there's definitely empowering the team but they should be they should be the owners um, and it's your responsibility as a leader to get your team to a place where you are completely hands off because they know it and do it better than you ever can um, there there is a good article I read from another CTO that sent to me recently where one of the things I talked about was you should try it's really tempting to but you should avoid hero mode where you see something's wrong, you're like, oh my god, I'm just going to jump in and fix it, um, and you know it'll be good for the team because they'll see that I'm still hands on and blah blah blah. Um, and hero mode is hero mode is bad in the long term because you want you, your team should be ultimately responsible for that and taking care of that and have the initiative to fix those things. I think that's so important, JJ. The and I like the term hero mode because there are so many times where you want to swoop in because a you don't want to see someone fail and then. B, you don't want something to potentially reflect poorly on the company. How do you hold yourself back? Well, the first thing you do is you, I think you have to be aware of it. It's almost like that's, that's the first step, right? Recognize that you're doing it. Um, and easily, easy, the first thing to ask is, do I, do I actually need to do this or can I, can I give this to somebody else to do? Can I delegate? People, I've spoken to many managers and CTOs. I'm sure those have spoken to CEOs as well when you're learning how to manage a big portion of his delegation. And one of the first things you have to learn is what and how to delegate. So that's once you're building that skill, it's really the same skill. Just recognizing also that it's good to do so as opposed to something you can do. And once you do delegate, Liz, you had a great insight. I, I can't remember who was an anchor entrepreneur about sometimes you have to just let people make mistakes yeah. so they can learn. To what extent? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm thinking of like someone on our team who's been one of the marketing managers to date and we just kind of, I just pulled her aside last week and said, what if I were to have you instead managing our communications, um, PR efforts, so you know, any inbound requests or anything you'll, you'll take over and also all of our communications um, for the most part to external stakeholders, um, whether it be press or audiences or whatever it might be can you own it? And she was like, I want you to know I've never spoken to a reporter in my entire life. And I said, I know, but you can speak to me. And so I think you could probably speak to a reporter. Um, and I said to her, like, first things first, send me everything that you have questions about and I'll answer all of them to the best of my knowledge. And then second thing is I want you to go to every single how to be a, journal a journalist or how to speak to journalists or anything events. And then I want you, the third thing is I want you to meet with every single person who's your position at every other company. And so now I have her going around to all these companies, meeting people, getting advice. Um, and she's going to, I emailed her like an essay of a list of things I want her to do in the first month yesterday and one of the things I said was um, it started off with you are going to pitch reporters and you are going to fail many 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 times that's okay it's what you do with the failure that I care about so if you if I'm really trying to get a story out about the fact that hey there's a kid named Eric who just paid his entire tuition through way up and you're not able to get that story out what I care way more about is why couldn't you get the story out and what are you going to do differently next time? Who are you going to pitch differently or how are you going to pitch differently, et cetera? Um, and I think she got it. We'll, we'll find out for next time. But um, I would say overall it's like telling people that, you know, 
you're, you're expecting them to not be perfect, um, but it's how they kind of handle their mistakes and their errors um, that will matter more. How about for you, JJ? Is that different on the engineering side? I don't, I actually don't think it's that different. You simultaneously want to, you need to let people make mistakes and that's because that's how they learn um, and that's how you grow. Uh, there was another good saying somebody told me recently where experience is just when you've made all of the mistakes there are to make in a specific domain and that, that, that's experience. Um, but on the same side, you of course don't want to take down the business either. So I think a lot of it is, is comes down to hiring really, really good people who you can trust to make the mistakes they can learn from, but also know when they really need to ask for help so that they don't make serious critical mistakes that hurt the business. And no one will ever make all of the mistakes though. I mean, you can't always, there's that's always That's why no one's, ever, no one's ever perfectly experienced. Right, okay, fair. On the note of giving your team members that freedom, but also being there when they need you and working on that balance, how do you guys invest in your team and scale learning at way up in the organization? Something we do across all the different teams, whether business or especially in engineering, um, is you always review. So throughout the company, you always review everybody's work. Uh, in engineering, there's a particular discipline where you always do code review all the time. You have three or four people check it to make sure you don't, for example, take down the site and you write tests against it. Um, and I, I think that's a really big piece of it. We do recap decks for the business side. If you're running a campaign or a project, um, you're going to send out a recap deck after so that everyone at the company knows what you're doing. Um, we have CEOs, investors, PR or uh, journalists come in and do lunch and learns with us. So one to two times a month, we have someone come in and talk to the whole company and like it's totally off the record and for one hour they can be asked anything from anyone and people tend to leave those and say like, wow, I actually learned a lot. So the last one was Haley, who was one of the co-founders, uh, Haley Barno, one of the co-founders of Birchbox. The next one is Payal from ClassPass. The one after that is Wiley Cirilli from Single Platform. We've got Anthony Ha from TechCrunch. So we have like all these really awesome people who will come in and kind of tell us about their stories and I think we really like learning from external stakeholders. It's one of the values of the company that we want all of our employees, team members to be people who find people who are better than them or people who are more experienced than them and ask them for advice. Um, and then we also do like lunch and learns among each other. I think our team's really collaborative. Like you'll never, I mean people are right now as sitting outside this room just all talking and I assume that they're probably not talking about what they did over the weekend. My guess is probably collaborating. So it's a very collaborative environment. I mean, we're like a fun group, right? So <laughs> it's, it's easy to be collaborative. I know you guys are super fun because I always see great pictures. But <laughs> on the side that's not super fun, you know, the day-to-day -day and the operations, what's something for each of you that no one warned you about? Life as a founder. So day to day is really fun. Really fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those pictures are just day to day. Yeah. Um, agree. Um, wait. So, what are the things that aren't fun What's, that nobody warned us about? What did nobody warn us yeah. About? What did no one warn you about? No one warned me about firing. That sucks. That really sucks. Um, people tell you hire slowly, fire quickly, but that's really easy to say. But no one ever talks about like, okay, what does it mean to fire? And so that really sucks. Um, I'll have that be mine. What about you? I think no one really explicitly warns you about, as you, they, they tell you that your job will change as the team grows. What they don't warn you is the inspirational component of it. How it's not just learning how to manage, it's how you, all, you have to also be inspirational and an inspirational figure and you don't have to always know the answer, but you should have an answer and a direction. It's not a bad thing, though. No, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's no. just not, I don't think it's something that is explicitly. Yeah. Liz is, Liz is firing, firing people, people, and it can go for both of you. You don't have to talk about your direct experience, of course, but how do you even approach that situation? Because right when you said it, I felt like I kind of tensed up, like, oh, no, I don't want to have that conversation. Yeah. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, no way of sugarcoating it. Yes, your business will be better off in the long run. But in the short term, it sucks. It sucks for the team members because our team is so close knit that you, you know, if someone is gone from the company, whether they quit or get fired, and fortunately we've never had anyone who's lasted more than a week and a half quit. I mean, one person joined the company and a week and a half later said, he was a new grad and he was like, I think this is too much for me. And we said, that's okay. And we understood. Other than that, we've not had anyone quit, at least to date. So I would say on the firing front, you know, you have someone who's leaving who is 
best friends or really close friends or roommates or whatever with a lot of people here, that's really awkward. And it's also just really unfortunate because everyone here plays such an integral part of the culture. So I would say number one is um, you have to – so, sorry, the question is just, like, how do you think about it? or well, How do you handle it? How do you handle it? Um, you make sure that they know that they're not – performing um, at the level that they're performing at. You never want it to be a total surprise ever. Um, the only time it should be a surprise is if you catch them in fraud, and luckily we've never had that happen to us, although I have plenty of friends who Shouldn't have. be a surprise then either to them. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I would say number two for how to handle, I mean, obviously there's all the legal stuff. Um, you have the legal paperwork and, you know, severance and all that stuff, but I think honestly, it's just talking to them like a human being and being completely and totally transparent. Like there's no way to sugarcoat it. It sucks. It sucks as much as I think anything that I've ever done at this company. Preparation, transparency, and maturity goes a really, really long way. You're both adults. You're both human beings and everyone knows it sucks. So if you deal with it maturely, it goes maturely. For you guys. What's the best feedback, whether from an investor, a team member, a friend that you've received so far like running way up? Feedback or feedback? Personal feedback that someone gave you. Oh, interesting. Um, what's yours? It's tough. Um, what's yours? <laughs> I mean, all the personal feedback I get from our users is always from, I swear, it's always from like our, um, our it's about our business. It's like, you rock because, but it's like a thing that our business does and I'm just maybe the figurehead that they talk to because I emailed them or they are emailing me, but usually it's like, because you got me a job. And so that's not me personally, that's the whole team or the company. Um, I guess our investors tell me that I'm one of the hardest working CEOs they've worked with. And so that's always nice to hear, although I, that doesn't always correlate to anything other than just a lot of man hours or woman hours. So I don't know, that's a really hard it's, one. It's a really good question. So much, like Liz was saying, so much of the feedback we get is inextricably linked to the business. Yeah. It's it's almost, I think, it is kind of a, a nice thing, too. That no one, people aren't coming in and saying, that, you know, the business sucks, so you suck. People come in and say, this is a particular aspect of the business that you that we need to work on, and let's work together to, to fix it. Someone asked me in an interview, interestingly enough, yesterday, what do you do outside of work? And my answer was, this isn't work. Like, I'm not working right now. Um, maybe work the only time I think it's work is like if there's a hard employee issue or something but other than which is fortunately rare um other than that I would say honestly like this isn't work when you're a founder this is your life this is your company but this is also like who you are as a person I don't have really much of a like a non-work life because of the fact that when I'm not at this office I'm thinking about it um, whether people want to argue that that's unhealthy or healthy, I don't care. I'm pretty healthy right now, so I'm having a fun time and I'm happy, etc. So I would say, in my opinion, when people are telling me feedback, maybe it makes sense that most of the feedback is about the company and not me because this company is me. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Then that's my answer. <laughs> it makes sense. That's my answer. How about you, JJ? Do you have one that stands out? It's really mostly the same. The most personal, actionable feedback I've gotten was that I should exercise a bit more. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I get that a lot. I just choose to ignore it. Me too. <laughs> As you guys look ahead and reflect on the last year, what's been one of the highlights that made you think, not, you know, everything's working, but whoa, this can be way bigger than we ever thought? Mm. So I'll say for me, we've spoken about Eric a couple of times now, uh, but still, <laughs> it, it just, I keep coming He's back gonna to He's going to be so happy. He, we have to send you should, I, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> um, we even, to take, to pick a particular point, that video, as much as I knew about the video going in and saw pieces of the video and knew Eric, so it's not like any of this is a surprise to me, seeing a polished way up video with Eric talking about all the things he achieved through us, somehow seeing all that come together was just like a wow. Okay, I have my answer. It's not the same. So my answer is uh, when I'm out in the wild and I meet a user of ours, not because I'm saying, hey, are you a way of user, but I meet someone who's in a job that I know we place and we work with that company. And I say, hey, just curious, how did you get this job? And they say, oh, like a college uh, job site. And I say, which one? And they say, oh, it's called Way Up. Um, and I'll be like, 
Oh, <laughs> tell me more. And I never tell them I'm a CEO. Of it. I never tell them I work there because I want to get their real feedback. But I was in Japan for um, an amazing conference that some of the guys at Index Ventures sent me to. And I'm at this conference. And before the panel I was on, so no one like knew who I was. I hadn't the panel itself was like in front of hundreds of people, but before the panel, I was in the audience, and, uh, in the you know area where everyone else is, and a kid comes up to me in Japan, and is like, I came to this conference from the U.S., I go to school at the University of Indiana, and I wanted you to know, like, I love your company, and I was like, you know my company, and he was like, are you kidding me? All my friends know your company. We all talk about it. We were talking about it last week and debating like how great of a business model it is and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know my company, and it was like really cool. So I mean, just because we were in the middle of Japan, if that happened in New York City, I would be like, okay, yeah, well, tens of thousands of students here have accounts, but it was cool to be in the middle of Japan or when I was at a country music festival in Chicago and a girl was working at the Uber station and I went up to her and said, hey, like, just curious, how did you get your job? And she said, you know, way up. And it's just those are the moments that I'm like, oh, shit, this is like, <laughs> this is growing. This is happening. This is real. So, Well, everyone on the outside can see that. And I know you guys are always in the thick of it. Both of you are two people who I hugely admire because of your work ethic and just the ability to always get things done. I can email you guys when I'm going to bed, West Coast time at 10 or 11, and you respond right away. And I'm like, oh no, they're still awake. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from you know, the mission of Way Up, what drives you? What do you do to constantly be getting better? I would say the team for me. I mean, if it's not, if it's not the mission, it's the team. Um, I want to be like the best possible CEO for these guys and women. And um, I know that if I'm not bettering myself, it's going to hurt them from growing in their own roles. What about you? I'll take that. I would say since team was taken, um, users really, I mean, it, it, I guess you could say, you know, the, you could discount that because of the mission, but, but really it comes down to like what keeps me going every day is when we get in that email saying like, hey, you helped me find a job. Like that, that is the product, mission or not. At the end of the day, we're building a thing and that is what it does. Um, and, and that's what keeps me wanting to make it bigger and better. I love it. Love so it. before so, we go, yeah. we just have three questions that are not related to way up or business or anything. The first one, if you were a song, what song would you be? Oh, this is gonna cute. be the best day of my life. <laughs> I love that song. I love that song. I listen to it every single morning. I that thought, or... I thought you were going to go with the way up. I feel blessed. I was oh. like, that, that's mine, obviously. <laughs> the Drake song. <laughs> the Drake song. That's good. <laughs> Boy, that's a good one. If you could teleport to any place right now, where would you teleport to? Barcelona. I just really like Barcelona. Mm, probably somewhere I've never been. Never been? Like Not... Antarctica? I hope you bring a jacket with you. Yeah, that's... Bad, yeah, bad place. Yeah, I want to go to Antarctica. I want to go to South Africa. I want to go to Italy. I have a few places, but Antarctica is number one. Okay. And if you weren't the founders of Way Up, what would you guys be doing? The founders of another company. <laughs> right? Probably. Yeah, the founders of another company. Okay, so then we'll stay tuned for years from now. We'll be doing Way Up. We'll have connected every college student to a job and what you what would you be doing if you weren't doing this some way doing the same thing maybe <laughs> ideally doing it live so that would be like my non-switch before we go how can everyone stay up to date with both of you and what you're learning along the way building way up but for students or companies who are tuning in how can they really get on the site and find the right direction Okay, so they can go to the website, wayup.com. They can always email us via the contact box, and either me or JJ or one of our team members will respond right away. Um, we've got Twitter, at wayup. We've got Facebook, wayup. <laughs> we have a great YouTube Instagram. channel with, with great videos you should check out, yeah. also wayup. So just go to wayup.com, um, and everything's you want, linked there. If you want inter really, really useful and interesting content, both for students and businesses, wayup.com slash blog. Uh, we have a great content team. Kima publishes amazing articles that are worthwhile for everyone to read. Yeah. And everyone should read and listen to any of the content that you guys post because you can always get a laugh and yeah. learn something. Like the last posts, Liz, one of them you had was six tips to nail a job interview. 
and one of them was, you know, don't come in and say, like, I am the rainmaker. I laughed so <laughs> hard at that. You'd be surprised. It happens. Pretty sure someone actually said that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, that was a real account. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. warning so to all people, people don't go to a job people. interview and say that you are the rainmaker. Exactly. Thank you guys, as always, for yeah. joining me, and I will hold you to something mid next year because I'm sure you'll have a lot of updates. Yeah, thank you so much. Good to see you.